All right, we're going to move on to our final um, topic here, which is also measurement. It's the practicalities of measurement. Okay, so first you want to get kind of confident at converting between metric units. So I had something that looked exactly like this on my summary sheet, just drawn in pen, right? So you want to draw these little conversion tables. This tells you that to get from centimeters to meters, we need to divide the number by 100. Now you might say, why are you dividing? It should be bigger, right? But if you have 100 centimeters, it's actually one meter. The zeros have dropped off, right? The two zeros have dropped off. This is representing how many zeros are going to drop off. So we're going to do these three conversions first. 200 milliliters to liters. We need to first um, go back to our conversion. Milliliters to liters is going to be dividing by a thousand. So we're going to do 2000 or 200, sorry, divided by a thousand is 0.2. So it's going to be 0.2 liters, 6.2 kilometers to centimeters. Kilometers to centimeters is going to be times by a thousand and then times by a hundred. So 6.2, we're going to times by a thousand, which is 6,200 and then times that by a hundred. And it's actually going to be 600 and 20,000. And then 89 hectares to square meters. Hectares to square meters is times by 10,000. So 89 times by 10,000 is 890,000. Yeah, 890, there we go. Square meters. Always write your units. All right. Well, we have all that written there for your answer. Okay, so this is something that confuses a lot of students, something called limits of accuracy in absolute error. What we do in practicalities of measurement is kind of provide for the fact that humans aren't infallible and neither are measuring devices. So scales, measuring tapes, um, the human eye, they're all inaccurate sometimes and inconsistent. So limits of accuracy basically tell us mathematically where the actual measurement is likely to exist, on what scale. So this is exactly what will come on your reference sheet that you'll get in your final exam in year 12, if they haven't changed it by then. It will have these three pieces of information. Absolute error is equal to half times the precision. The upper bound is the measurement plus the absolute error. And the lower bound is the measurement minus the absolute error. So absolute error is the greatest possible error mathematically that could have occurred while measuring something. The precision is the smallest unit of measurement on the measuring instrument. So let's say a ruler that goes to millimeters, the precision is going to be one millimeter. If a scale reads to 20.4 kilograms, the precision is 0.1 kilograms. If a measuring cup goes by 100 mils, then the precision is 100 mils. Let's say the scale only goes to 21, 22, 23, 24. It only goes up by one kilo, our precision would be one kilogram. Okay, in a school experiment, a student measured a length to be 9.4 centimeters. What is the upper limit of accuracy of this measurement? Okay, so our precision here is 0.1 centimeters, which means that our absolute error is half times 0.1 centimeters, which means our um, absolute error is 0.05 centimeters. To find the upper limit, we just add that 0.05 to 9.4. So our answer would be 9.45. You see that here, um, 9.45 centimeters. Okay, this is from the Nessa sample questions. A person's weight is measured as 79.3 kilograms. What is the precision of this measurement? Okay, so again, we're measuring to 0.1 kilograms, which actually means we're measuring to 100 grams. Um, we've already answered that. What is the lower limit of accuracy on this measurement? So we'll do our absolute error. Half times 100 grams is going to be equal to 50 grams. The lower limit accuracy has to be 79.3 minus what is 50 grams to a kilo. So 0 0.05. And that would give us, we'll look at our answers here. 0 0.05, 79.25. Okay, this is another example. Hannah purchases a carton of beer. Each can of beer has a mass of 420 grams. There are 12 cans in the carton and the carton itself weighs 780 grams. 
what is the weight of the carton represented in kilos? Okay, so each can of beer has 420 grams. There are 12 of them. So 420 times 12 is 5,040 grams. And the carton is 780 grams plus 780. So the actual weight of the carton is 5,820 grams. To convert that to kilograms, there are 1,000 grams in a kilogram. So we're going to divide by 1,000 to get our smaller number, even though it's worth the same amount, which is actually equal to 5.82 kilograms. Okay, find the absolute error for the measurement of 11.45 kilometers. We're looking for our smallest part of the measurement. So we're going to 0.01 kilometer, which is 10 meters, because this would be 100 meters. So the absolute error is going to be half times 0.01 kilometers, which should be equal to 0.005 kilometers, so 5 meters like that. And then our final question, a rectangular room is measured to be 6.8 meters long and 4.5 meters wide. Find the area of the room. So the area of the room is just going to be the side minus the, the, the long side minus the width, 6.8 times 4.5. So 6.8 times 4.5 gives us 30.6 meters squared. Now, the second part of the question is a little bit more complicated. What are the lower and upper bounds of the true length and width of the room? So we need to work out the true length and width and their lower and upper bounds from 6.8 and 4.5. So they both have the same absolute error, which is 1.8, 1, 0 0.1 meters. So we times that by half, sorry. So our actual absolute error is 0 0.05 meters which means our lower and upper bounds of the true length and width are going to be 6.8 minus 0.05, so 6.75 um, to 6.85. And our width, it's going to be 4.45 to 4.55. And then if the third question was, what is the lower upper bounds of the true area of the room? You would be doing um, 6.75 times 4.45 and then 6.55 times 4.55 because that's representing theoretically how small and how big the room could actually be. Alrighty, so how to ace practicalities of measurement. Two things, practice those conversions. They will inevitably be like a small part of the question, but they will be so important to getting like the overall seven marks. So make sure you know how to convert. Don't waste time and make a silly mistake. Practice those conversions over and over again. If you're looking for like a little intro to your like um, revision for the day, practicing conversions can be a really great way to do this. Just bust out 10 questions easily. You could honestly at this rate, get like AI or chat GPT to write you practice conversion questions. And the second tip, make sure to think about the precision and think about the measuring instrument that's being used and if your precision makes sense as the smallest unit. So the what I'm really saying there is if you have a ruler and the fi you find the precision is 10 centimeters, does that sound accurate? Does that sound like the closest measurement that your ruler can measure? Or are you actually probably writing down 10 millimeters or one millimeter or something like that? Okay.